From number five chambers, I'm Richard Kimblin, and this is the Planning Podcast, which today, in March 2021, turns to what we've been doing for the last year, screens, the way in which we have conducted our hearings, inquiries, examinations and trials, and we look for some tips on best practice, learning from what we've been doing in the last few months. With Oliver Lawrence, Howard Leithhead and Shoned Davis, barristers in planning and environmental law at Number 5 Chambers, we see how we can help further and make this form of litigation, this form of examination work still better. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Richard. Howard, how are you? Very well. How are you, Richard? Really good, really good. And Oliver? Hello, Richard. Very well, thanks. Good to see you. And Sinead, you're joining too. How are you? Very well, thank you, Richard. Good to be speaking with you. Welcome to the Planning Podcast. Now, and we're going to see where we've got to, because we're not far off a year since we've been entertaining ourselves with screens and doing the day job via screens. So let's see where we got to and how much we can help as a result of the experience of the last few months. Let's start at the beginning because we have to prepare. Oliver, what would you say we ought to be looking at just in the generality of preparing for an examination or a hearing or an inquiry? What are we really starting off with? Yes, well, I mean, Richard, we've all got we've all got screen fatigue now, a year in. But I think we've picked up a few learning points along the way. I think you know the starting point is unlike a physical inquiry um, in person, there aren't these bundles of, of of documents just to sort of share and sort of pass around sort of easily. And I think that the priority is just to make sure that um, you've got all the documents on your side. Make sure that all the team members have access to the documents, and uh, so that you can all work together. And are there electronic means that you have found or heard of that would really help? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so the, the documents, uh, the core documents especially, should be stored on Dropbox. Um, so there should be a Dropbox account, which you know, your team can, can all work from, the witnesses can access. And, uh, and, and of course, I mean, the, you know, the electronic collaboration doesn't end there. I mean, if there are any queries about the documents that arise you know, during the inquiry, uh, there should be a WhatsApp group set up so you can all contact each other. Excellent. And Howard, have you been have you been inquiring recently and learned anything which might be of assistance with preparation? Well, Oliver's mentioned uh, core documents and storing them on Dropbox, and that's and that's really useful because everyone uh, can see them, particularly the core documents. And, it, and it's important the core documents are all in continuous hyperlink documents, which makes navigating them easily. Uh, it's also really helpful to have digital bundles. Uh, and the admin court has provided some guidance on that, uh, which which is particularly helpful. Uh, just going through a few key points, it's it's, it's important that digital bundles is complete, so it's got all the documents uh, in it, obviously, that it's paginated continuously. So even if there's internal page numbers, uh, you can still refer to a separate continuous page number going through. It's important that it's easily navigable. And you can do this through bookmarking uh, the PDF. And, and it's also important that it's searchable through optical character recognition. Um, that just means so that you can do a control F search to, be able to find things quickly and easily. And it's helpful if, if it's capable of electronic markup and notation uh, so that um, the team can, can, can add comments and that it's also accessible by um, inspectors and anybody else really, inquiry participants, members of the public and so on. When you're storing it in, in Dropbox, it's helpful to have really short and snappy file names so that you can find uh, each bundle quickly and easily. Mm. Well, that's the sort of tab point, isn't it? Because you, once you get all of the many PDFs open and for some reason everybody decides to give them names beginning with a number, uh, unless your brain works differently to mine, I'm much better off with a name smith's proof is much better than giving it a code so yeah i completely get that it just helps you 
It just makes it so much easier. It does, yeah, it makes it much easier, doesn't it, Howard? Uh, Jeanette, I know that you've been inquiring recently. What, what, um, <laughs> what sort of preparation and uh, other features of, of the virtual tribunal have you noticed? I think in my experience, it was actually very useful to start grouping documents together. So following on from what Howard was saying there, bringing together documents which are, for example, relevant to the authority's local plan, bringing together documents which are relevant to a particular member of the team's proof of evidence and indeed supporting documentation can help you navigate through what can be boxes of documents stored virtually. I also think that marking the documents up is is a really important exercise and that, in my experience at least, has meant that we have been required to front load a lot of the work before the inquiry. So that's meant marking documents up virtually using bookmarking through, through the PDFs, but also ensuring that relevant sections are, for example, hyperlinked, highlighted, therefore easy to easy to navigate during during the inquiry. And did it save time in the inquiry? Yeah, I think I think it did. I think it meant that we were able to reach documents um, very quickly and in particular using, for example, the control F button meant that instead of flicking through lots and lots of pages, we were instead able to search the document and find, for example, the relevant policy number within a matter of seconds. In my view, at least, that was a a considerable improvement on um, the way things were done in paper form. Well, saving time is quite important now, isn't it? Because um, with all the breaks that they take <laughs> and uh, the, the reduced amount of inquiry time every day. Um, I mean, is that what you found, Richard, with the virtual work that you've done so far? Well, absolutely, Oliver. You've raised the point of the uh, considerably shortened day, be that examination, hearing or inquiry. Uh, I have to say that it's rather civilized um no sitting till seven o'clock very precise timekeeping uh, hour and a half session half an hour off hour and a half session an hour off <laughs> it's delightful but, but the upshot is that the number of days for the event tends to expand and so it might be a rather easier day but uh, it must result in a more expensive event whether clients really appreciate that is another question entirely, I'm sure. I think that's a fair point, Richard. In my experience, at least, it would seem that we've saved costs in other areas, for example, staying away for weeks on end at, ver- at various uh, inquiry venues. Yes. So that you, you're saying if you look at it in the round, the travel time is gone, the accommodation and subsistence is gone. Maybe it all evens out and maybe it's better for large groups of people who feel excluded by reason of either the long days or the traveling and maybe there's a massive social benefit. I would agree with that and again in my experience I felt that experts who were only perhaps peripherally relevant to a particular session were able to log in and listen in to the relevant proceedings without needing to be there in person and for example give up a day of their otherwise valuable professional time. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I've I've seen a real decline in the amount of you know, third party representations from the from objectors as well you know, in virtual inquiries. I mean, if you go, you go to an inquiry in person, sometimes you know the whole community is there, you know, ready to object to a proposal. But you know, it's ironic, you know, the, the requirement to attend town hall or some inquiry venue in person you know, requires people to get out of their houses and go. Whereas now all they have to do is log on and yet they don't seem to be there in the same numbers. Mm. Right. But so that has all sorts of uh, impacts. Let's think about the impact in terms of running the case. What's your experience, Howard? When do local people virtually turn up beginning, middle, end, sprinkled throughout? Well, they're usually, there's, there's usually high numbers at the beginning. So for an in-person inquiry, you'd expect high numbers there at the beginning and then and then the number will trickle out. So Oliver's absolutely uh, right that for my my experience of virtual inquiries, that um, there, you know there just aren't many observers there at all after day one or day two, and it's it's not really clear why why this is why someone would go in person uh, but doesn't log in on on, on their laptop. It, there could be a a negative point, which which perhaps is they haven't got the technical ability to do it or there's something which is stopping them from doing that but that doesn't appear to be the case because they managed to make it on day one 
perhaps they've simply found something they'd rather do with their time. <laughs> perhaps they found something better to do with their time. Ned, you can't, you're laughing at that. You can't believe it, can you? <laughs> I can't, I can't, especially in a lockdown. What what better things could you be doing than listening into a virtual inquiry? But um, I, I would say I disagree somewhat, actually. I, I mean, the inquiry I was involved with actually attracted um, a considerable number of local people who were interested. And there was, for example, a residents association who were involved as a rule six party. And many of the points which were taken by either side were not really relevant to the residents case. Um, but it meant that they were able to log in and participate in the sessions that were relevant to them. And like I say, have the have the proceedings ongoing in the background um, so that they could keep track of the case. In, in, in that regard, I think it was probably quite a good thing for local residents to be able to keep track of what was going on without necessarily needing to devote huge swathes of their time to attend the inquiry in person. Well, let's now turn to. Uh, the event, as I say, be it examination, hearing, inquiry, or, or taking part in the trial. Let's assume we're doing it by Teams, Microsoft Teams. Let's assume that. Any tips, Oliver? Uh, well, I mean, firstly, it, this is something I say to to every witness, really, who's who's planning on giving evidence to an inquiry or or such, is that uh, they have to have a second screen, a second device on which to work with the documents, because you've got one screen up looking at the inspector, possibly being cross-examined by an advocate um, who's staring down the barrels at you. Um, you really don't want to have to navigate away. It's quite unnerving not to be able to see their faces while you do that as well. To go to the document, you want to have them right there on the side. It's, it's surprising how many people, obviously it's, you know, it's expensive to, to have to find a second screen, but um, I, I find it absolutely essential. Second screen, Jeanette, any tips? Uh, I would, well, firstly, I would <laughs> strongly agree with Oliver on that front. I've, in my experience, at least a second screen has been an absolute necessity. But in addition to that, I would say just a very simple tip. Just make sure that your name tag is set to something appropriate. <laughs> you don't want instances where you're logging into a virtual inquiry with, for example, your partner's name or indeed an overhang from one of these Zoom quizzes, which many people have been participating in, where they might have set it to something rather more humorous. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So beware of your own propaganda. How at any points on any practical points to get people through the virtual inquiry using Teams? I think uh, one difference between a virtual inquiry and a in-person inquiry is, is is the mute button. The inspector will encourage you to use the mute button because it reduces feedback and it's important to do it from that point of view. But it's also got practical benefit to you because it means that if you've got someone in the room as long as it's appropriate to do so uh, you you can have a conversation with them whilst the inquiry is going on as long as you as, as, as long as you're maintaining professional rules of conduct and, and, and looking professional before the inspector uh, as well normally in a in an inquiry or, or hearing you can't have a conversation with a junior or, or, or with a witness uh, while the inquiry is progressing well let's then turn from the tech to what's actually going on between the people because let's face it it's a meeting and people are using every skill of communication that's available to them but limited by the tech to a degree what's your experience oliver of the ways in which people interact and the ways in which people can exploit the new way of dealing and the way in which they're inhibited well and, and the last inquiry i did virtually the inspector made clear at the outset. Uh, he said that he tells he's told every witness, you know, um, I promise you, I'm 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 looking at you. It doesn't it doesn't, don't pay attention to where I'm looking exactly. Uh, I can see you on my screen. Um, you won't be able to see when I'm noting, but I promise you that I am. I mean, there's there, there is that big difference, which is that um, as an in-person inquiry progresses, you can't help but try to get a read on the decision maker. Um, what are they reacting to? What points do they like? And Currently, you, know, you, you do get less of that. You really do. I mean, mainly because you can't see when they start noting. That's the big one. And so you pretty much have to go off the questions that they themselves ask of the witnesses. But I, I think there's one exception, actually, which I've noted, which is that I think it's because the decision maker is, is in the comfort of their own home, usually, behind a screen in a, in a, in a place of safety. I have noticed 
they do seem they seem more at ease to laugh when they find something amusing or if an advocate says, you know, makes a joke which they particularly like or something in cross-examination comes up which it never happened to me Oliver <laughs> obviously not uh, but uh, I, I've, I've seen that I, I saw one inspector who, who started cracking up at, um, at an aggressive point in cross um, and and then and then she immediately stopped herself from laughing which was sort of very sort of very sort of revealing um, she might have felt that sort of perhaps you know, that too much support for the point was being betrayed over the screen. Uh, so with, with that caveat, uh, it's harder to get a read. Harder to get a read. Harder to get a read. So in, in, inhibition of the process is what you're identifying. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Jeanette, what do you think? Um, I think one of the dangers that... <laughs> That, that's, that inspectors often warn about um, in the virtual inquiry setting is that experts are often minded to, for example, share screens. And that might be because they want to take you to designs or plans if they're architects. Or it might be because a, there's a particular viewpoint, which, for example, can be conveyed through a picture on a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and that's something that I've seen in the most recent inquiry um, that I was involved with. It does come with a risk though that often when you share screens you are running the risk of messages for example popping up onto your screen emails coming through or inadvertently sharing documents which you weren't expecting to and um, that's just a really important point to bear in mind um, if, if you are planning on 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 sharing your screen with the live inquiry. Mm. So your uh, experience is as, as a general welcoming of sharing the screen in appropriate sex. It was something which was welcomed by the inspector, particularly in the situation where they were not able to undertake a site visit. Oh, they, they were going to undertake a site visit in, in the coming weeks. But when considering the evidence and considering, for example, important views, it was helpful to have those documents um, shared, shared with the inquiry and for the relevant witness to take the inquiry through the relevant views. Those could obviously be shared by uh, front loading the preparation with photographs for example uploaded to the core document repository which might be managed by the local planning authority in in my situation there was a kind of design officer who wanted to talk the inquiry through the relevant views on, on the approach to the site mm. so is that in fact an advantage because my general experience is that there is some resistance to having what are essentially PowerPoint presentations. I mean, it happens. I've had it in fracking inquiries, minerals, and when we did lots of uh, Highways Act long inquiries, then there would be a screen. But generally speaking, it's regarded, I think, as a bit of a faff. But it's so straightforward, isn't it, by sharing a screen? It actually presents an opportunity for you to present your material in a way uh, which is as effective and as ordered as as possible. Yeah, I would agree with that. Caveated perhaps by the fact that you could submit those documents in advance and they could be uploaded to prevent you having to screen share. Yeah, and and, and run the risks associated with that. But I suppose all of that comes with a caveat also that that which you're proposing to screen share must be in the body of the evidence in the first place. Uh, otherwise people will come down on you like a ton of bricks for trying to introduce something at the last instant. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm. Okay. Oliver, what about focus? It's very important, Richard. It's very important in general. <laughs> it's even more important. Now. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, there's significant screen fatigue that's caused by sitting through a long day in these virtual events. And inspectors I've seen are very, very aware of this. It is real. And it makes everyone's brains a little bit fuzzier and it makes them a bit more tired. And uh, when, you, when you throw in the fact that there's less time to deliver your evidence in now, it's more important than ever to put your, put your best point first, best point forward, snappy summations. And so it might even go back to preparation of witness statements or, or, proof, or proofs of evidence. Live, the livelier witnesses are awarded, I think, in the virtual format because... There's just an, it's just it's harder and harder to make make evidence really sing to the inspector. You know, evidence that rambles tends to be punished by the format as people get more tired. I, mean, I think it's probably the most uh, important point for examination in chief, really. Actually, I mean that's when you can really structure the evidence that you're giving. 
Um, so I just think it's something everyone knew already, but it's just, there's, a, there's a new emphasis on it now. I shall now make a point of making sure that the acoustic evidence sings with appropriate focus. Surely acoustic evidence pings. It pings. It pings now, yeah. <laughs> and how can we help people generally with logistics? Do us a bit of logistics, Howard. Logistics is, this is the sort of boring bit, but it's really important. The, the first point to make is, is you need to think about your location. For in person inquiry, it's really easy. You turn up to the venue. Uh, for inquiry online on Teams, you will have the team spread potentially uh, all over the place in their own homes and chambers, in their offices and so on. So you need to think about whether it's necessary or appropriate for parties to give evidence from home or, or, or together in chambers, taking into account a whole range of factors. At quite an early stage, you want to talk to people and, and, and work out who's going to give evidence from where on which day. This involves booking rooms, if it's going to be in chambers or offices. And, and another thing which uh, comes up is that you want to have a, a breakout room or a, um, a separate meeting room for team meetings to take place outside of the inquiry because it's easy to finish a session of, of, of a case or an inquiry and then find uh, that there's no link or you're not quite sure what the link is or, or somebody you know who needs to be in the meeting isn't quite sure what, what, what the link is so that you can quickly switch from the inquiry to being able to discuss uh, things with, with your team in a separate online forum. And, and thirdly, just practical points which, which apply to all Zoom meetings and, and that sort of thing in, in general, just making sure you've got an appropriate background, something professional and neutral is, is, is always a, a good idea. Inquiries can be hectic, stressful events, so preparing for this in advance just, just makes things a lot easier. Thank you very much. Howard, is this right? Somebody at the start of all this said it's a good idea to have a WhatsApp group. And so everybody now assumes that you need a WhatsApp group, but nobody can really explain what the advantage is over just using email. It's quicker. Yes, yeah, I think it's quicker as well. Yeah, I do too. Sorry, why, why do you think it's good, Howard? I think it's good because it's, it's quicker. And if you're dealing with an inquiry on, on, on a screen, you can do with a WhatsApp on your phone. And it's just it's just easy to then to switch from one to the other. You can if I'm I'm looking at you on a screen now, the audience won't be able to hear. But if I'm sitting here looking at my phone, you can't actually see that I'm looking at my phone, can you? But I could be sitting here reading a, a group chat on WhatsApp whilst talking to you at the same time. And, and you've got absolutely no idea that I'm doing that. OK, it's just all, all around easy. And several people can participate in the same thing without having to keep opening new email messages. If, if you were to send me an email now, I'd try sure I'd get a pop-up, but then I'd have to click on it, go into the email, and all of that takes time and my attention away from what I'm doing. That's 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 why I... It's, it's specifically, I don't know what email client you use, but it's specifically when you have multiple messages in the same thread, which is very annoying, because then you have, say, someone has sent five messages in a row, um, or has been replied, you have to click on every single one of them in order to stop it registering as a new email to, to read. And you get a lot of you get a lot of bad pointless um, points being exchanged. You know, people want they, they want to communicate. Whereas in WhatsApp, you know, there's none of that. You just you just scroll past it if it's irrelevant, and you get to the point that you need to listen to. So it's not just because there are many more stickers, emojis. <laughs> that's that's not the reason. I think the important point is that it's the equivalent of the post-it note in the inquiry environment. Like you wouldn't think about sending an email in court, really. It's instantaneous, it's short, it's snappy, it's quick. It means that you can convey the message you need to convey very very quickly without having to think about how, how you draft an email. I think the other point is that it invites communication between lots of different people at the same time, whereas an email can be quite direct and targeted at one person. Um, the important point, however, is to remember that when people are being cross-examined, they need to be taken out of the WhatsApp group and then added back in at the appropriate time. And that can create some addi additional admin for the poor person who set up the initial WhatsApp group. <laughs> that sounds like that's come from the heart. <laughs> OK, I, 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 I'm persuaded. Email's gone. It's definitely WhatsApp. Lots of thumbs up for WhatsApp. Got it. You've all helped me a lot. I'm sure that my next event will be much, much better as a result. Super, thank you. Um, it's now 
half past six and we've all been in screens all day and there's probably some more to come but it's been great to see everybody goodbye that was the planning podcast we very much hope that some of those points helped that some of those points might have amused and we look forward to being back with you shortly with some sports games and pastimes looking at a Supreme Court case which deals with town and village greens and how they might affect your development, a site in your area. We look forward to being with you then. Until then, stay safe, stay busy. Goodbye.